Hi guys, welcome back to another video on information technology. Um, for today's video, I want to go over Mailbox. The basic mailbox on Exchange 2013. I managed to get uh, Mail Exchange 2013 installed on my computer. So I just want to go over creating a mailbox. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a user account and we're going to sync his account with the mailbox. And that's what we're going to do today for basic training. I apologize for not making any videos. I've been a little busy. Um, you're going to see a couple of videos uh, about mail exchange, creating groups, policies, and all this good stuff. So let's do, uh, let's create a user and let's do a mailbox today. So you see here, I got my server 2012 R2 open. I have my exchange server installed and I'm on it right here right now. I'm logged in as an admin administrator. So let's create a new account. So we're going to go into new user. And I'm going to call it Jose. Call it Rivera as the last name. Initials, you just say JR. Uh, I'm going to do J Rivera as a login name. And we're going to set password never expires. We're going to make him an admin as well. So. Just give him a password. It doesn't matter what password I'm going to give him because we're just going to go over the mailbox today. Our mail exchange. We're not going to go over anything else but mail exchange. So, all right. So, I created the account. Now, I want to sync that account. If you have a domain, any kind of domain, it should sync automatically with your mail exchange. If you have mail exchange on a different server or on this server, it doesn't matter. As long as they, they have the same IP address and they have the same subnet and they're in the same gateway and all this other stuff then it should be fine we shouldn't have any issues so it's okay if you don't understand what that means but basically if they have this they're on the same network they should be able to talk to each other so i created the account now i want to i want to create a mailbox for the account so then when the user goes to his computer for the first time and he opens up outlook his whole account should sync automatically when he creates his account and when he logs in for the first time they're asking for his password, and it should just create his account automatically. If it's on the network and if it's on the same domain, it shouldn't be a problem. So let's create a mailbox real quick. So in the user mailbox, um, we're gonna not going to put an alias for this. We're just going to use this is new users. If you just want to create a mailbox only, you could just create a mailbox only. But if you want to use like a, a user account and put give him a mailbox and you would just click on existing user account so we're gonna click browse you see here it automatically shows up because of the domain and because of the exchange they're all together it syncs automatically it shouldn't be a problem so i'm gonna click ok so i'm gonna go to more so mailbox but basically um, depending on what environment you are, some people will have four or seven or ten servers. Depending where environment you are, you will click on the mailbox that is correspond with the server. This has a mailbox built inside of it. Um, some mailboxes might be located in New Jersey. Some will be located in in Chicago. Some will be located in Dallas. So depending depending what company you are, are working at and stuff like that. You have mailboxes located in different locations. Obviously, we're not going to give them a mailbox if it's located in, in Europe or it's located in Hong Kong or it's located in South America or in um, East Africa. You're not going to give them a mailbox if he's based in the U.S. You're going to give him a mailbox that is actually in the U.S. You're not going to give him a mailbox that's all the way on the other side of the map. So this is based in, this is based in New York because I'm from New York, and this is based in the U.S., so I'm going to give him this mailbox, and this user is going to start in New York. Let's just say he's starting in New York. So I'm going to click OK. Then you want to give him, this is archive, so archive basically allows you to save old emails, and basically it's supposed to back up all your emails and everything that you store on your actual inbox. Unless, if you erase it, then that's different, but it, usually it... Usually if you have old emails, it stays stored in your archive. So this creates an archive inbox where it stores all your information up to three, four, three, four, five years ago. Um, usually it just stores it there for you. Um, so I'm going to click, yep, let's create one. Um, create a premise archive mailbox for this user. That's fine. Browse. It's going to be the same one because remember, we're using the same mailbox server. They have to be the same location. You can't just have... Um, 
You can't have two separate mailboxes, one located in, in north, one located south. They have to be in the same location. So you click OK. Now, usually if you do group policy, you set up policies and stuff like that, then you could set up policies like a retention, retention policy. Like it's good for one year, good for three years, good for four months, good for six months. You could set it up here, but I'm not, I don't have any type of policy set up, so it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm click Save. Now, I want to go over the mailbox and what exactly you could do in this mailbox. So, I'm going to open it. So, here you could change the name, the initials, the last name, display name. Display name is basically what it's shown in the address book. Um, whatever, whatever is displaying the address book, this is what everybody should see when they look at their Outlook account. They should see this name. You click more, require, password change on next login. Hide from address book. So if you ever want to, if you ever want, like for example, a user called you, and they say, um, "I know such and uh, we got rid of such and such person, so we don't want to see his name no longer in the, in our um, gal and our, our address book. Can you can you? I don't want you to erase him, but can you erase him from our gal from our address book? So you click this one here. It's called hide from address book. So even tells you what it is if you click on it. So it says if you select this option, the user won't appear in your organization address book and other addresses listed or lists, but they will still receive emails sent to them. So if you don't want you don't want to see that user in your in your um address book, you just click that. And then these are custom attributes you could set up. It doesn't let me do anything here, that's fine. This person, so when you see this error message right here. You won't get anything because this is to see the retention policy of archive, basically, is the archive policy. But they have to be logged into a computer for the first time for all this to fill up and stuff like that. So you'll, you'll get an error message like that. So that's fine. Here you could put their city, their state, where they're from, uh, their office, their home number, the web page, mobile number, fax. Here you could put if they're from like an IT department. So in this case, for me, the person I wanted, I created, he's a. Uh, He's going to be um, desktop support. That's his name. And he's in IT. And he's in KevTech company. And then the manager, you can put who the manager is and the administrator. Directly, direct reports to the manager. Just put that in there if you like. And when you're done, you could save the information. And then if you go back to it, it should show up there. And then this is here. This is pretty cool. Each uh, email address type has one default reply address. So you could change this if you like. So I can't do it now because let me see if it lets me do it. No, because I don't have any any other email addresses set up for him. But basically, you could change it if you like. I can't change it for him, which is fine. He has to be logged in. So I'm getting all these warning messages. So then there's the policy that's set up for him, no policy. Here is if you want to set up um, your phone and voice. This is for like they had they're, and they're trying to do voicemail on a Cisco phone and stuff like that. Here is um, Active Sync. If they're trying to add their emails to their phone, you will go here. And I can't open it, obviously, it won't let me. But basically, you could go here and uh, you go here and unlock the device if you need to. And this doesn't let me do anything. That's fine. It's fine. Doesn't let me do anything. It's mail flow. You can you can um, forward this to other recipients if you like. And then these are if you have distribution groups, you you could check here. It tells you what distribution groups they belong to and stuff like that. And then this is mail tip. And then this is mailbox delegation. So. Say, for example, a, uh, a client wants the ability to send as, uh, so this is send as permission as delegate to send email from this mailbox. So say, for example, you want someone else to send send as for this user, like, like Sam, for example, wants to have send as permissions for this user, then we'll put him in this, this one. And then send on behalf, which allows the delegate to send on behalf of the user. So we'll put them in these two categories here, send as, send, send as and send as behalf of the user. So, you, so basically, Sam is sending as Jose, but he's not Jose, but he's sending as Jose. And basically, that's what it allows you to do. 
and then full access is what you want to give the person full access of your mailbox so basically they'll have access to your mailbox they'll have access to your contacts they'll have access to your your calendar um, they'll have access to pretty much everything on Outlook when it comes to Outlook if they're trying if they use their, if they have a mailbox and they'll have access to everything calendars contacts uh, your mailbox um, your calendar permissions the calendars that you have set on your account if you have shared calendars you have it there then yeah they will have, you'll have that you'll have access to that as well um, and all this other good stuff so yeah so that's basically the gist of a user mailbox um, that should be everything this is what I'm talking about this is this is, this is where if someone adds their emails to to a, a mobile phone like add their, their work emails or personal phone you unlock it from here this allows you to allow the the device this allows you to block it this allows you to wipe the data if the device if someone steals the device you can wipe the data on it and then you can create a rule for it and then you could delete the device if you don't want them to have access to the mailbox anymore you can just delete them from from here from mobile device details uh, what else we have what else we have let's see and then this is just close that it's the policies I don't have any policies set up which is fine and then the email connectivity it's fine and this is if you want to move the if you want to move the the items on you create you could move the local mailbox you can move it to another server in another area if you like target area I only have one so I'm not gonna do that so I have one area only but this is basically if you want to move it to another another mailbox server and that's basically what that is so uh, with that being said thanks for watching my video um, rate comment subscribe give me a thumbs up greatly appreciate it. I greatly appreciate the, the, the views and thanks for watching all my videos um, next time I'm gonna go over groups then I'm gonna go over a couple other things in mail exchange and then after that we're gonna go over um, hardware uh, basic hardware for computers and that's about it you guys have a good night take care Bye now.